Hello everyone, today we're going to be talking about a split plot design example and how it differs from a completely randomized design, experimental design, and how that can change the type of experiments that you carry out and when that might be uh, advantageous. So the experiment that we'll be talking about today is the effect of four different corn types and three different irrigation levels and how that affects corn growth. So in a completely randomized design, um, we would start with, say, the total farmland that we have available that we'll be using in this experiment. And for each experimental unit to be randomly assigned the combination of irrigation levels and corn type, we will need to be able to independently control each, say, we, if we have one instance of replication, we will have 12 different experimental units, and here's what this would look like, where you have each plot that is has its own irrigation system that can be controlled at the level, as well as the corn type that's planted there. So, as we may have seen before, the model for this looks like the corn growth term uh, made up of the population mean. You have a main effect, which is coming from the one of the three irrigation levels, the corn effect from the four corn levels, the interaction effect that could be between corn and irrigation level, and finally the random error associated with each experimental unit. Now I don't know if you guys have ever installed many sprinkler systems, but it's not very much fun. And to install 12 separate sprinklers in this case to carry out this experiment using a completely randomized design is not feasible and would not be able to be analyzed using this method. So here is where the split plot becomes very useful, where it's very difficult to control and vary levels in your existing land. And the term split plot, or split plot model, is actually based on the term plot of land. So there's a relationship there because that's where it's so useful. So the first step of the split plot design is to you take your experimental materials, in this case it's all of our land, and now we break it down into what are called whole plots, and there is a whole plot factor. Now each whole plot factor, whole plot, is then broken up into what are called split plots, and there is a split plot factor that governs um, how those are broken up. So in this particular example, we have our total farmland, which, how convenient that it has three sprinklers, is broken up into three whole plots. And the whole plot factor for these plots is the level of irrigation. And that is controlled using the three sprinklers that we have for each, one for each whole plot that we have in this experiment. Now to form our split plots, we have the whole plots broken up into four different areas, one for each type of corn. So the split plot is just a little quadrant of the whole plot, with the split plot factor being corn type. Now, because we're changing the numbers of how many factors there are, so we have three whole plots and the four split plots, which is different than 12 separate experimental units, that are independently and randomized in how the treatment combinations are assigned, we have to affect our, or change our model. So to do so, we're still interested in the corn that we've grown. We still have the population mean, and we have the main effect of irrigation. But because we have the three whole plots, as opposed to the 12 experimental units that we saw in CRD, we have a new term to account for the whole plot error. This accounts for the three whole plots that have their own levels of irrigation. Now we still have the main effect of the corn and the interaction effect, but now the final error term that we see is for the single split plot instead of just the uh, error from the experimental unit like we would have seen in CRD. So based on the feasibility of, or more so the infeasibility of completely redoing the irrigation system on this farmland, we wouldn't have been able to do a CRD, but by using 
the principles of the whole plot and split plot factoring, we're able to use the split plot design and split plot factoring to be able to effectively analyze and carry out this type of experiment.